Let's go. What do we got for tonight? Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa If a person becomes desensitized and numb to humiliation and pain, is something wrong with the person's heart? <laughs> no, this is that. I <laughs> we talked about that last night. Stop for a while. Let's, let, let, let's clarify for our, our audience that are coming in from subcontinent areas oppression and humility, they're two different things. When a, a female or a child that doesn't have the ability to fight or speak and people bother them, they're under the category of oppression and Allah granted them that anyone oppressed, their du'as are fully accepted in Divinely Presence. This is their najat. So when people are oppressed, the parents are hard, the, the spouses are hard, they merely make du'a, Allah is granting them immense najat and they're skyrocketing on their elevator. Finished that category. The other category is you both have physical ability to harm somebody and a verbal talent to harm somebody and they come after you and you choose to shield your sword. You could take it out and fight somebody. If you have that ability and you shield it, means that you're choosing not to be aggressive, you're choosing to be humbled. So when Imam Ali was fighting, he was fighting for Allah the person spit on him, he put his sword down. He said, now I'm worried that if I hit you now, it's going to be from my anger. I mean this was futuwa, this was immense chivalry. This is the concept of humility, that if you have the ability, it could be a man and woman, you have the ability to talk, you're very sharp, you, could, you have the ability to use your tongue, you have the ability to, to use your aggression. And Allah is saying, if you have that ability and you choose not to for my sake, I will raise you because you stay quiet. The person humbles you, you take the humbling, you know, as long as it's not oppression and not in a, in a situation of… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. danger, that's not the situation. But everyday life everybody has to answer back quickly and before you know it fights break out, yelling and screaming break out. That's where the station of humility is different than oppression. As soon as we talk on this subject all the oppressed start asking questions and emailing about you know the, the difficulty and azab of people. But oppression is something completely different than having the ability and refraining for the sake of Allah to stay quiet, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa <coughs> How to be humble and not use authority with children and educate them at the same time? You have to use authority with children but we said before that the path has to be based on love. Just like how the shaykhs are teaching, they're not like the other scholars yelling and screaming at everyone, they teach with love. The concept of madad, we gave that talk that how do you give and teach a child madad? Allah made it natural that you be kind, 
they love you that's madad. They call you with their energy of their heart and the bond is made. So then what Western culture wanted to break madad? So they put out a book in the 60s and told everybody, let your kids scream. You didn't think that was calculated? If, if your goal and this their system, they know the goal but people are asleep. The goal is to indoctrinate the children and change their orientation. So if you know that that was the goal, how are they going to get there? Well they said in the 60s they started, so let's put out a book. And in this book we'll break the bond between child and parent and say, when your child screams keep them in the room, shut the door. Immediately the madad, that God-given madad of that infant is lost. They no longer trust the parent and they no longer have that connection with the parent. And that's all the shaitan wanted. And then a few years later they told and pushed these desires with television that they want all these washing machines, they want all these devices, they want all these appliances. Then the household said, well we can't afford it and they said, why don't you go get a job too? Because remember the goal was what? To indoctrinate the children. So one, we broke the madad, two, we put the woman into office where she can no longer teach the children. So then who would be teaching these children? The one who was trying to orient them in different directions. The children are to be taught there, they're supposed to be taught at home and the family unit is supposed to be established and the child is supposed to sleep with the parent and bond with the mother. And that bond is, is a, a sacred bond not to be broken. So they, they have a plan and they know how to patiently get to that plan and everybody else is just not woken up to the plan. But Islam understands shaitan's plan and that's why they have a big problem with Islam. They are always awake. Other people are dormant and sleeping, other people have had medieval times. Islam has never had an evil time. Islam illuminated their evilness and was always in light and always knowledgeable. And everything that Prophet brought for us was a medicine for all these sicknesses. Prophet taught that you feed the child for two years, you bond with the, the mother and the child is a bonding. So alhamdulillah, Islam has the whole solution to everything but inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa how to train the nafs to take the testing and stay quiet and not let the ego scream louder while the test intensifies. Thank you Sayyidi for your guidance and lights. So it's the salawats, the awrad, the zikrs, the madad. When you make your connection and the energy that comes into your heart it becomes your GPS and we have that in other talks. The, the servants who train in their madad and in their connection, they have a sixth sense. Means they have a, a sense something's happening all the time. And we gave a talk like that, that when you're about to go somewhere, when you're strong on your tafakkur and contemplation, say, oh, I'm going to that house, I know what's going to happen ahead of time. I know who's going to start approaching me with ridiculous questions. And I know exactly these situations that are going to come. So they're not caught off guard, they're not heedless people because they have foresight. The one whom opens their heart and connects with their heart, they have a luminous vision and they understand where they're going and who and what, what's going to be coming to them. They keep themselves in wudu, they make their madad. So they're continuously ready for satanic battle. Doesn't come by surprise, it will come by surprise by amateurs. 
The one who has advanced training understands, oh shaitans are coming to make big problem for you, prepare yourself and your people. You think they get caught by surprise? Oh I didn't know this guy was going to come and make a big fitna here. No they know exactly this guy's coming with to make a big fitna here. So make your connection and be aware of all these difficulties that are around. Then you begin to walk with this guidance. So I know when I go to this relative's house, I know that aunt doesn't like Islam, doesn't like the turban, doesn't like the beard. It's not going to be a surprise. So I'm going to go and I'm going to stay quiet and I'm not going to engage in a discussion. Because it always comes out like, can I ask you something? Say, no absolutely not. Because <laughs> I know what you're going to do. I know where this goes. So you know this becomes a part of the whole process. When you do all the practices you have a sense of enlightenment in your heart. You know when somewhere's dangerous. You'll get an inspiration, don't go into that place, don't walk into there. Or something is happening, your heart starts to beat and it's telling you, get out of that place. That's, the energy is not right. So you don't take yourself to bad places. You know that when people drink they say bad things because their shaitans you know start to look at people with the beards and Islamic outfit. So it tells you, don't be where these people drink, don't be out after certain times of, of the evening. So all of this is a spiritual battle by the inspiration. So it's the whole trick was to open your inspiration so that you, you traverse this landmine of dunya so that you're not always caught in a situation like, how you going in this situation? If you were inspired they would have inspired you, don't go there and don't go there at night and don't, don't sit there because those people are going to drink and come start saying something to you. You go to a relative's house and you know that relative is going to say something so you live your life by your inspiration and your connection. And that's why it's so important to make the connection so that we're not hit by shaitan continuously on, on a random hit but you're like a chess game now with him. The angels will inspire you that shaitan is going to hit you tonight at that place and he's going to come through your relative to say something. You're, you have pre-warning. So you come in with your wudu, your practices and you understand exactly what's going to come from what direction, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for everything. Could you please elaborate upon the reality of our reserved place in Jahannam and the deeper understanding of getting freed from this dimension? Yeah, so that, that uh, yeah, I don't know, we talked in Ramadan, but e everybody has a reserved seat in Jahannam and that's where their nafs comes from. So nafs is, is, is created from that Jahannam and becomes partnered with shaitan. And our life is to take our life out of that seat, to clear ourselves from that difficulty so that we don't enter into that abode. And that becomes the zikrs, the practices and all that Prophet brought for us. And when Allah truly wants to guide the servant, he guides them to the key of freedom from fire. What we say in the Jummah al uh, about Ummat al-Muhammad who frees his nation from hellfire at the beginning of the Jummah. Dar al-Jaheem, nafqad arabi wal ajami, mawna mawna dar al-Jaheem. The one whom frees his nation from hellfire. Huh? Every Jummah we say, yeah to be free from hellfire by Prophet So Zahiri say, oh I wonder how that's going to happen. Internal, Allah says, yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how that's going to happen. I'm going to in your meditation show you your pit, this is your fire. Now do your zikr in this fire, it's not going out. Do this, do everything you think you know. That fire is not going out because you don't have that power and that ability and Allah, Allah created us to need Prophet right, That's why we say it in the Jummah. So once they realize this is not working, this is, this is immense sadness, immense difficulty, 
begin making your salawat. And as soon as they begin to make the salawat and durood the sharif upon Sayyidina Muhammad his physicality appears at their grave, smiling at them. They're lying down and he's smiling at them. And as soon as Prophet smiles upon the servant, Allah evaporate the fires. Because Allah says in Qur'an, how can I punish them when they're in your presence and making istighfar? So they're asking forgiveness, anybody in fire is going to be asking forgiveness is logical. But as soon as the presence of Prophet comes to them, the fire extinguishes as if it can't even be there in the presence of Prophet And they realize, they witness with their heart, Rasul Kareem is the only one who can take me out of this abode of punishment that I have put myself in. So then they kept with their durood, kept with their salawat so that they were companions of that light, that they always accompany the presence of Prophet so that his nazar and that his presence to be a cool and peaceful against anything Allah may be angered by which could be many things we do wrong. But because of the companionship of Prophet that fire becomes bardan wa salama, cool and peaceful. And this is then the secret that they understood in their, their khalwas, their seclusions. And that's why they all came back and tell everybody, make durood, make Mawlid and Nabi celebrate the moment that Allah brought that rahmah into existence. That very rahmah is the celebration of your freedom from hell. You should be praising. And that's why awliya came and said, praise with abundance, bring out the best of what you have because you're free from hell now. Except what? Shaitan comes and says, why you had to do that? This is completely forbidden, don't do that. Why? Because he wants them in hell. So the milad has immense realities. That's why some people say, why all these shaykhs of tariqahs, they focus on the milad and Nabi And outward scholars find it to be something questionable. No, inward scholars they saw this was the freedom from hell. That the presence of Prophet freed us from Jahannam and difficulties and fires. Forget about all of the gifts of the soul of Prophet This just the azab. Once you got past the azab all your gifts came from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So the single greatest act that you can do is Mawlid and Nabi You celebrate the moment Allah brought the rahmah into existence. And as soon as you celebrate it that Allah open that light within your soul and make the Muhammadan light to become activated in your soul. Because you celebrated what Allah brought as a mercy for all of creation, mean you hit the bullseye. And that's why the milad is so immensely powerful. But you know people have to have a heart to understand. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ash-shafati wa Rasul Kareem. And it was so immense that Shaykh Daghestani said that anybody who celebrates Milad al-Nabi from my intention I grant them as if they did seclusion with me for nine years. Just make a milad with the intention of Sultan and awliya and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, and I will grant you from a seclusion of nine years with me. <laughs> That's what three days a week you're making intention of milad and Nabi <laughs> And anyone can make intention in their home, in their kitchen, in their living room. I'm making intention for Mawlid al Nabi by the barakah of Sultan and Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz Daghestani, and you start making salawats, and that's your milat. You can give fo- food out, you can give water out. So, the, this, the tariqah comes with like a rocket. Their elevators are not even elevators, they're like a rocket ship into Divinely Presence, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, 
We have now five bands, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.